ever. Wow. Yeah. So they just weren't prepared. I mean, they'd never, you know, flooded before. So there was no preparation or nobody knew what to do when it all happened. Right. Right. Oh, wow. That's awful. Hello, everyone. Hey, Shannon. Vale, are you talking about Tennessee? Yes. Yeah, I heard about it. Somebody had told me about that. I, I didn't hear about it because I don't ever watch the news anymore, ever. But um, somebody well, had... We have family around these areas that are flooding, like in North Carolina and Tennessee. You become aware because they call yeah. you and tell you about it. Yeah, no doubt. I think that's why somebody told me about it because they had family in that area as well. Yeah. So how's everyone doing? Good. Yeah. It's been quite an interesting week. So um, glad to just be able to relax and go over God's word and <laughs> everything. So we're good. Oh, there's our youngest member. Hello. She's getting so big. I know. She's always like, what is going on? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, so today we're going to go over Galatians 5. Um, and to say that I did not, I, I could never go over enough of Galatians 5. I feel like you could do, well, our church series, our church actually just did a sermon series. And whenever I put the replay up, I will put the link to the sermon series. Our pastor did an awesome job on this. He did a fruit every week. He called it fruit gushers. So if you, so if you, if you, uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, if when I send the link, just go over that and it's called fruit gushers. So he gave out fruit gushers one week too. So for everyone to eat. So it was really kind of funny, but at any rate. Um, and I had to say, Stacey, throughout this week, all I could do every once in a while is laugh at the corn star whenever I would think about it. it I, I laughed. So you made me laugh all week, I think, because I just every time I think about it, I never even Googled it or looked it up on YouTube or anything. But just the, the title of it alone was so hilarious for me. So it just brought me lots of joy. So whenever it was much needed, a, a week of much needed joy, because it was a really hard just, week. I just reached for the bookmark I usually use which it's um, Mary Englebright and it just says, oh, I'm fine, just fine, perfectly fine. Really, I'm fine, fine, because I keep it here on my desk. But for some reason, I went and grabbed this one. And what is it? It's the PPP Fruits of the Spirit yes. bookmark. Awesome, yay. Oh. That's so awesome. I've got mine. <laughs> yay, y'all are awesome. We're great yeah. people. I don't even have mine. I don't even know where mine is. I'm such oh a my cow. gosh. <laughs> So I don't use bookmarks. I just kind of use my pen as a bookmark. So yeah. yeah, awesome. Okay, so all that to say is Galatians 5 has so much in it that I feel like we're just going to get the tip of the iceberg of what we could grasp from it. But in, in an ideal world, it would be really nice to do a, like every week you could do a fruit of the spirit, which is what our church did. So it's already done. So I was like, well, there you go. It's already done. I can just sit, share the link and y'all can get way more, um, in depth teaching on that. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and pray us in and then we'll start Galatians five. So does anybody want to pray us in? Okay, I'll pray us in. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this time together to dig into your word, Lord, and and for your word, Lord. It's just so good. And I don't know, I'm just amazed at it. And just reading it in depth like this has just been so refreshing and amazing, Lord. And I just thank you for everyone here today. I thank you for everyone who watches the replay and Lord, just for this group and for all that it is, Lord, we just pray that we will put you first and foremost. And Lord, we just thank you for the God that you are, that you give us this um, to be able to protect us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, Stacey, do you want to go ahead and read verses one through six? Freedom in Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. 
Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are try trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Yeah, so verse one, Paul believed that even though the Galatians had recently moved toward embracing the false gospel of being justified by the works of the law, they could still stand firm and reject the view. Paul was asking, if you have been freed from slavery once, why would you go back to it? Um, it's so crazy. I didn't even realize this. I was actually listening to a sermon while I was working out just a minute ago, and it was actually, he was talking just this exactly thing whenever he was a missionary in Peru, it was Paul Washer, and he was saying how there was a lady and she was so bound by her works that she, she just, he tried to use that. And he actually used passages from Philippians and um, about the dog. And she then got attacked by a dog when she left the office, mad at him. And so she came back and she said, tell me again about that. Like, I think God is finally getting my attention. And so that's kind of what this is. Like we we cannot work enough for our salvation. We just can't. Why would we want to? Jesus, our, we cannot do what Jesus did on the cross. We just can't. And so we, we do not, there's nothing that we can do to, to work our salvation out. Um, and so it's like, and then also in this where it says, we don't want to submit again to a yoke of slavery. I think of Romans 7 on this. I do what I don't want to do. And all that too, as well, the do-do-do verse. Um you know, we are, there are some things, and we're going to see this a lot next week in Ephesians, but what keeps us in slavery? So what sin do we keep going back to um, that you just really feel like you, you just can't, you can't master it. It's like, you know, sin is creeping at the door and it wants to devour you, you know? And so I just think of um, then verse two through three, the main issue is whether the Galatians had so completely adopted the Judaizers perspective that they would, they would now act on this view by being circumcised. It was probably this dilemma that prompted Paul to bring up earlier that Titus, a Gentile, like the Galatians, had been compelled to be circumcised in Jerusalem, though the Judaizers had applied pressure in that direction. Paul reminded the Galatians that those who are circumcised are obligated to keep the entire law. So that's where we're going here is the legalism among the Galatians wanted them to think that they could have both Jesus and the law relationship with God. Um, now the old Testament law is not thrown out. It's not like we just say, Oh, the old Testament doesn't apply anymore. It does. It does. And we're going to see that a lot next year when we go over the old Testament, I have to say, I've been helping Lori pick out verses for the 2023 planner, believe it or not. And um, just going over like the verses in the Old Testament, I'm like, I can't wait to go over the Old Testament. It's going to be so fun. Um, but see, that's what the thing is, is that, you know, Paul is telling them that this is not an option and, and open up to them. The system of grace and the system of law are incompatible. Whoever wants to have a half Christ loses the whole. And so they're, what they're doing is they're substituting what Christ did on the cross for the law. And we can't do that. We have to have both. God is wrath and he is love. We can't take one without the other. And I'm thankful for that. I mean, um, and so there's, the thing is we can't just take one section and say, this is the only thing. And, and again, that's like the old Testament. We can't say the old Testament is complete without the new, they are complete together. And, um, and so that's what Paul is kind of, but to me, I can grasp them because like, this is all they knew was the Old Testament. So coming in and having Jesus come in, I mean, that had to be hard, you know, this is all they knew. And then, and I think that that's what is happening here is they're trying to figure out how does, but, and that, that happens is when we become new believers, right? When we become new believers, we're like, ah, what do I do in this? I have no idea. Like, you know, and that's why discipleship is so important. Um, and then verse four so this is okay. So trying to be justified by the law was the polar opposite of being justified by God's grace through faith in Christ alienated means to be cut off from them. Like by being circumcised and seeking justification before God, by the law, the Galatians were cutting themselves off from Christ. In this context, falling from grace refers to falling away from or forfeiting the perspective of salvation by grace through faith. And so yet again, they are making it more complicated than they need to. Right. 
I mean, I'm guilty of that. I make the things way more complicated than they need to be. And that's what they're doing. So no fault of their own. That's why it's so important why Paul is coming in and kind of, and he's lovingly telling them, hey, let's kind of get back into the focus of, of the right way. And then Paul's um, verses five and six, Paul stated that hope for long-term righteousness before God is through by living by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so we are called to love. Paul kept reminding them to have faith and love. It seems you cannot have one without the other. True, true faith is a working grace. It works by love to God and to our brethren. May we be of the number of those who, through the spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. The danger of old was not in things of the no consequence in themselves, as many forms and um, observances now are. But without faith working by love, all else is worthless. And compared with it, other things are of small value. And so basically that quote, it's just saying like, without love, we are nothing. Um, we are to do things in love. Now to say that we do everything in love, I don't, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I, if I told you that I'd be lying. So um, there are some things I would do out of obligation, but there are some things that it's, my heart is just really heavy and I can see God moving my heart to have a love and compassion towards um, a certain thing or a person. And I know that has to be him because my selfishness would be like, I don't really care, but then God's spirit is coming in and saying, no, but you need to. And this is why. And so I think that that's why it's so important to remind ourselves to stay in God's word and just remind ourselves that it is not about us. It is about him and about what he has done. And I think that that's where I feel like that's where the Galatians kind of missed it. They, they, they just kind of took away that cross and they, had to try to fix it themselves. So I don't know. What are y'all thoughts on that? That was a lot to take in. And don't forget to unmute if you want to talk. Since y'all are Russian, I guess I'll go. <laughs> so you're talking about, you brought it up a good point. Like when you're kind of new to all this and like myself, I find myself now in this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm like in the middle, I'm exhausted, yet I keep praying and I get a little more strength. I wore this shirt for y'all today. It says, coffee gets me started. Jesus keeps me going, you know? And it's like, that's where I'm like, I'm struggling yet I'm growing in it. So I don't know, like, like you said, it, it's, it's, it's so much to take in yet now I've, I'm to a point now where each time I start to feel the overwhelm or, and I'm waking up at night and I can't sleep and I'm trying to fix things that I can't fix. And I'm like, I'm finding myself stopping. No. And la last night it was on repeat. God help me. God help me. God help me. And so I think that, I don't know, like, like you said, is the more you believe, the more you can reach out to him kind of a thing. So I don't know, kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think verse five speaks to how we are a work in progress. That for we through the spirit, the Holy Spirit, wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. It's, it's his righteousness and the Holy Spirit is working through us. And we do have to be patient. We do have to wait. It's not going to be something that a transformation that happens overnight. Um, sometimes I wish it was because then we don't have to go through all, <laughs> all that that Stacey was just talking about. But um, yeah, it, it, what, what a blessed promise, you mm -hmm. know, that he's working in our lives. And I think, I don't know if Taylor's on today or not, because I can't on my phone, I can't see. Uh, but, you know, she brought up this week that sometimes uh, in the one of the chats underneath one of the days that sometimes she feels so inadequate or whatever and and she sees herself and her shortcomings and and I think we all do but if we can look back to where we started and compare then and know that he's begun a good work in us and he will finish it um you know we just have to hold on to that and and this right here is another promise right there that he is working for through through us for righteousness in him through us yeah and i think what's so beautiful about that is that he still uses us when we are in that like yeah. you know and that's what totally blows my mind um okay i'm gonna get off topic for a second because i have to tell myself because 
you know, that's just what I do. Um, <laughs> and so yesterday, y'all know how bad of a driver I am. I own it. I'm a terrible driver. <laughs> I will admit. And the only reason I say this is because I have something sitting right next to me. Um, so yesterday when I was dropping Faith off at school. So here's the thing. There's our traffic is insane at school line. Okay. It's insane. And so the red light was red and it takes literally five minutes for it to turn green. And I was like one car away from turning into the church parking lot to drop her off because I can drop her off and then she can walk across the street because there's a cop there. Well, the, I turn into there and then I get, uh, I get pulled over. And so I was like, oh snap. I was one car, one car away from the double lines, you know, the double lines that you're not supposed to pass. I made sure there was no cars coming and I was like, it's one car. And so then I pull in and sure enough, I get pulled over. And so I get a ticket. And so as I was telling the cop, I was like, y'all like, listen, you don't understand. I I'm, I'm a stickler for the double line. I always make sure, always make sure that the double line before I go, because I didn't tell them because I got pulled over a few years ago for that. But, and I told the cop, I will not do it again. So I was like, I'm not going to do this again. And so I don't, but he didn't say the double line. So now I have to, like, I told the cop this time, I'm not going to do that again. And I do learn from my mistakes. So then I had to call my husband. I'm like, so here's the thing. I, but the exciting thing for me is I get to do the traffic school again. And I really like the traffic school. Last time whenever I did it, it was like awesome. And the lady gave like these really great stories and everything. So I was like, man, this is really good. And so he said, I can do that. And then it won't go against, oh, that's awesome. So I'm telling my husband and he's like, I have a meeting. I got to go. I, I don't want to talk about this right now. I was like, okay. So then I go to Kroger. And so as I go to Kroger, I'm like, okay. So remind you if all that to say, I have to tell myself for that because this is how, and Sue, this is where I'm getting to where as I'm going, uh, as I'm like going back into Kroger, I, or I got my groceries and then. I go and bring the cart inside the store because they're store, short staffed. And I heard a sermon a long time ago about how you should always bring the cart in the store. So I always remember that like they're short staffed. I should go bring the cart inside, even though the, the little cart thingy was like two parking spots. Instead, I was like, okay, I'm going to go put my cart up. And so as I go in there, I saw this precious little girl and I'm like, she is adorable. So I go up to the mom, of course, a social distance. She is so cute. Y'all. She is so cute. And I just started talking to the lady and I'm like, where are you from? And she's like, Japan. I was like, oh, and then so I just start talking to her. She knows nothing that I'm saying because I'm speaking in English. And then so regardless to say all that to say is I eventually was able to call my friend from Japan and put her on speaker and because she runs a Bible study and the lady just moved here and she had no friends. And so she was able to get connected with the Japanese Bible study. And so like, so all that to say is- And if you wouldn't have got the ticket- you wouldn't oh. have got the ticket. You wouldn't have been yes, there at that Stacey, time. You see exactly. my logic. And so exactly. I was like trying to tell my husband, not that I'm trying to justify my ticket because I am a <laughs> sinner in need of grace. I'm not <laughs> trying to justify it because I, I know, I know I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to ever go in the double line because it's dangerous. Um, but how cool is God that he used that even though I'm a sinner and he used it to just be able to plug this lady who was, I mean, she was very lonely. You could tell. And um, just by like her talking to Kyoko, my friend, and her telling me. So, and I mean, apparently, anyway, you really God. enjoyed traffic school. So, I mean, God was like, "Here's a yes. need that I can smell for yes. you." Well, no, I didn't know last night. Somebody in small group said you can just go to any of them. I was like, "Really? I did not know this." Like, you can just plug into them now. But sadly, it's your, online. Your stories are the best, Shannon. You just keep those stories coming. God wink right there. I mean, if there ever was a God wink, that was it. Amen. Amen. Well, it was just cool how God does that. And so my husband really couldn't get mad at me after that. So too. So after that, he was like, I can't really get really mad at you, but please don't do that again. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not even today. I was like, I'm not going to, and even faith was like, mom, don't do it. And I was like, faith, it's one car. And it was a small car. And, and she was just like, oh, somebody got, she got in the car. I was like, faith, I'll tell you what happened. She's like, oh goodness. What'd you do mom? I was like, ah. So and anyway. by the power of Christ, I will break the law because it is his will. <laughs> So he does use our sin and he can use it for good. And so like, you know, and that's what's so cool about God. You know, he, he, I don't know. I just look at that and I just think how many times in my life have I messed up that he has used it for these cool ways of, of witnessing to others and telling others how, you know, God is good and he does forgive. And just those simple things of telling people, 
you know, I don't know. So anyway, it was just really cool. So I did not expect to tell you my story, but my ticket is just like right here, sitting here. So I was like, oh, well that just, when Sue said that, I was like, oh, it reminds me of like, of course, thank you, Lord. For I even told the cop, I was like, I think I'm going to use this in my Bible study eventually. Cause I know Jesus does these things. So I will tell others. And he started laughing. He's like, okay. I was like, okay. So anyway. Spreading the gospel one ticket at a time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So does anybody else have anything on that section? Well, I don't know if this is uh, relevant or not, but the first of the week, my son texted me and he said, I think by now you know where I am. I'm doing my humanitarian deed. And he said, God has led me here. So I volunteered to be here in Afghanistan. Do not worry about me because I believe that God has put his shield of armor around me. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So oh, I was uh, I was already knowledgeable because I'd heard through somebody else that he was there. But then he continued to say that until you've known the people, the Afghans, you do not know what this is doing to them, that it was necessary to eventually pull out. But the way it was done has been catastrophic and is really sad. Oh, that's so hard, Val. But he believes that it is his humanitarian duty to show his kindness and his love for others. Wow. That has well, you proud as a mom. What is his name? So we can pray for him? Davis, D-A-V-I-S, James. And the next time you talk to him, thank him so much for his service from your Bible study group. I yes. will. Absolutely. Yeah, his brother said that he, who's his twin, would really like to be there. But under the circumstances, they would not allow him to go because he has a young child. And so the military said they would rather send those who wanted to go because he said, whether you believe it or not, the military that is there wants to be there. Mm -hmm. They are not forced mm -hmm. to go there. It's voluntary action. And believe wow. me, well, there are a lot of people that are in the military that feel the need to the call. You yeah. just let him know that we are praying for him. For sure. Yeah. And you're bringing light to something that's not being talked about either. You know, he's, he's doing God's work and he feels called to do so. And he's a light in a very dark people's life right now. Yeah. So <clears throat> very thankful for that. Yeah. When we end today as well, just remind us and we'll pray for him too when we end. Okay, Stacy, do you want to go ahead and get the next section? It's hard to follow that. Um, verses 7 through 15, please. 7 through 15. Okay. You were running a good race. Who could in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take, to, take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Life by the Spirit. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Vail, the verse 13 and 14 reminds me of Davis, what he's doing, what, he, what you just said. Exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Um, for sure. Um, verses 7 through 10, the Galatians had started running the race of Christian life well, but the Jewish teachers prevented them from continuing. The implication of the provo proverbial statement, a little yeast leavens the whole lump of dough, is that even if the teaching of the Judaizers was initially accepted by only a few Galatian churches, it would spread quickly. Remember Jesus's solemn warning against those who would lead one of the little ones astray in Matthew 18, six through seven, the judgment is sure whoever he is. It does not matter who he is. He may oh, yeah. be highly acclaimed in the community where he teaches, but if he is perverting the gospel, he is a guilty person and his rank and reputation will not shield him. 
And then verse 11 through 12, apparently a rumor from the Jewish teachers claimed that Paul still preached circumcision in certain circumstances. If, um, evidently a misunderstanding of Paul's um, actions designed to become all things to all people so that I may be very, every possible means save, save some. And that was from 1 Corinthians 9.22. In that spirit, Paul had Timothy circumcised in Acts 16.3, but Timothy was circumcised to become a Jew ethnic, ethnically so he could minister to the Jews. So this had nothing to do with becoming a Christian. Those who are, who were, who are disturbing you were the Jewish teachers who emphasized circumcision. So again, this is why I think it's important to know the circumstances so same as Titus, someone might accuse Paul of preaching circumcision because he was asked Timothy to be circumcised, but Paul didn't have Timothy circumcised. So Timothy could say, save, be saved or more saved. He did it. So Timothy could more freely evangelize among unsaved Jewish people. And again, this is like, um, I think of like one of like, whenever Paul was talking about, he became something to help others. And we see that with missionaries. There's some missionaries that will become like the people that they're around so that they can minister to them. And there was one, um, I can't remember her name and she, or no, not her. It was the guy, he went to China. Um, gosh, I can't think of his name. Adam he, Iron? Who? Adam Iron? Maybe Judson? it was Adam Iron Judson. Um, and he cut his hair and he ended up becoming like the Chinese and People thought he was crazy at the time, but he was like, in order for them to respect me, I need to become like them. I'm too Western. And so he came with all his Western, you know, get up and everything. And, and he had to become like them. And so that's what happened here in order for him to be able to relate to the Jewish people. He had to become like Jewish people. And so that's why context is everything. And like that, that to me kind of helped with that. And also a little yeast leavens the whole lump of dough. This is interesting because a few weeks ago I went to make calzones and I forgot to put yeast in it and oh. um, it didn't work out well for us. <laughs> so we, and it, it, you know, it is so crazy. There's a little bit of yeast, like you think that they don't make that much of a difference, but they do. And that's how we are. We need to remember that as Christians, we think that we have like, we don't like, even by telling somebody about Jesus or just even being a good example or something like that. We think that we're not doing anything for anybody, but we are, we could be that little seed, like a mustard seed, like they say, but a little yeast, you put that yeast and it makes, it makes it right. But if you forget, then it's no good. Right. And so we also have to remember that as well. It's those little things. And Paul expressed um, verses 13 through 14, Paul expressed concern about the behavioral um, opposite of bondage, um, an opportunity for the flesh. He also expanded his initial reference to love. While it is foolish to submit again to yoke of slavery and trying to keep the law, it is right to be servants to other believers through love. Paul said that to love your neighbor as yourself fulfills the entire law. Um, I love, I just love that because it is easy to think liberty. Um, okay. So verses 13 through 14, we are called to be free brothers but only don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. And we've talked about this. I think uh, a few, I think it was in the Corinthians. We talked about that. Um, it is easy to think Liberty is right to sin or privilege to do whatever evil my heart wants to do. Instead, this Liberty is the spirit given desire inability to do what we should do before God. And Sue, you had mentioned something like that. I think in yesterday or the day before, in one of the um, readings, um, I can't remember what it was, but you had mentioned something on that line. And I really liked what you had to say. Um, I don't know if you remember that or not. I've got my journal here. Let me see. <laughs> it was like, uh, it may have been Monday because Crystal had mentioned, had said yes. And then I was like, yes, exactly. So you had mentioned it. It was really good. So while you're trying to find that, I'll kind of scoot on to 15 because I want to get to the next section because I think we're going to talk a lot on the next section. Um, so verse 15, the phrase bite and devour one another probably looks back to an opportunity for the flesh and looks forward to the parts of the listing of the works of the flesh. Paul had apparently heard that there was serious dissension in the churches of Galatia. He warned them that such attitudes and behavior would destroy them. Um, okay, so this is how Satan has come in and done this. The gospel is a doctrine according to godliness, verse Timothy 6, 3, and is so far from giving the least um, continu continuance to sin. 
and it lays us under the strongest obligation to avoid the subdue it. The apostle urges that all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in, in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If Christians who should help one another and rejoice one another quarrel, what can be expected but that the God of love should deny his grace, that the spirit of love should depart and the evil spirit who seeks their destruction shall prevail. Happy would it be if Christians, instead of biting and devouring one another on account of different opinions, would set themselves against sin in themselves and then in places where they live. I love that quote. And I think of how many of y'all read The Bait of Satan? Have any of y'all heard of it or read it? No. No. Oh, y'all. It is one of my favorite books to read um, because it is, it talks about how the spirit of offense comes in and how Satan takes the spirit of offense and it comes in and it has devoured so much. Now, I don't agree with a lot of like some of the stuff that he says in the book, like, but it is, I wish every Christian would read it because I think churches wouldn't split as much. And I think that Christians would get along a lot better because again, it's just the spirit of being, it's just being honest with people. Like, why did you do that? Like, or did you mean to say that? Or, you know, I've had people that say that to me because I come as brash sometimes and I'm like, yeah, that didn't really sound right as it came out, but at the time it sounded good in my head, you know? And so it was just like, you know, but I'm so thankful when people ask rather than letting the spirit of offense come in. And again, if we've talked about this before, if you know that person's heart, you know that their heart is good and they're not out to devour you. They're out to love you. And, um, and I think that that's why it's good to build relationships and everything. But we, I think it really is not allowing the spirit of offense to come in. And I think that's where Satan has just, he's been able to be so successful in that. Um, so I feel like that verse is so on point nowadays. Yeah, it should be written as a PSA on social media. Yeah, it oh. just. <laughs> that is so true. Ruth and Stacey, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so easy. Like, <clears throat> it's so easy for people to be mean on Facebook and, um, mm -hmm. you know, but you just got to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Whatever. It's even worse when it's like in your own family. Uh, oh, it's yeah. Like, it, I, it's all I could do to not hop in because my other, my older brother posted something that he felt it was his thought. It was his opinion. He was given his two cents. It's his Facebook page. By all means, say what you want, bro. Good for you. My cousin, every time he posts anything somewhat like that, my cousin feels free to hop in and say, I can't believe you're so stupid because my cousin doesn't agree. <laughs> Yet what baffles me is you go on my cousin's page and it's all about, we should all get along and we should not talk down to each other. And that, and it's like, I sit there reading it and I'm like, I'm waiting for the, you go ahead from God to be able to hop in there and go, all right, kids, we need to talk because you're doing exactly what you preach not to do. I'm confused. Let's discuss. You know, what is say, not as I do. Yes. And it's just like, I sit there and it's like, I don't know, a bigger conversation, but what happens to polite discourse? I agree to disagree. You know, uh, certain things shouldn't be discussed. It's like, I don't, I don't know when everything kind of flipped upside down to what used to be societal norm, but now it's just like, you don't even, you can't even go on social media for pleasure anymore because usually there's a fight about something. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go read me a book. Good thing we got a good one right here that we can read because <laughs> nowadays, good Lord, they could all use this book. That is yeah. all thank you for attending my TED talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Sue, did you ever find it? You Are you talking about the one about the Holy Spirit coming into a person's life or the one about us bearing another's burdens? It's a sign that I comment too much. No, you don't at all. I love that you comment. Okay, on that, I would like to vote that Sue writes it, devotional. Just saying. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. Well, I, can't, like, I saw I which one, one she's talking about. This is Monday and it's Tuesday, so I'm not sure which one. When a Holy Spirit comes into a person's life, that a person experienced spiritual growth, or if it, or if it was when we bear one another's burdens. It was Shannon Galatians was 4. Yeah. Okay. Galatians. Mm -hmm. Well, 
that would have helped if I know. I'm sorry. I'm one day ahead. Go ahead, Shannon. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I shouldn't have put you on the spot. So here it is. Here's the day of Galatians 4. I'm on the. Okay. It seems like they were always trying to convince themselves that the law was too difficult to follow. Jesus, on the other hand, is always trying to show how easy it is to follow the law when we simply follow him. He works through us to make all things so much easier. It's only hard when we try to do it on our own and don't allow him to guide us. It's the ploy of the devil to make us think it's just too hard. Yeah, I love that. Amen. Yeah, that was really well, good. Well, and I mean, and, and that's, you think in our lives, that's where we, when we get down or when we get whatever is when we become overwhelmed with these, these feelings or whatever. And those, I have to tell myself, those feelings don't come from, from the Lord. Right. Oh, you got mute somehow. So you muted somehow. Oh, there you go. The, the negative feelings come from the devil. I mean, and so if we think that, um, yeah, sometimes we say things to ourselves we would never say to a friend. Yeah. We're so much harder on ourselves than we would be to a friend. Yep. And I have, you have to keep that in mind. You know, when you feed yourself that negative talk, would I say this to a friend? And no, you wouldn't. So don't, don't say it to a child of God, yeah. which is what yeah. you want. Yeah. Don't do it to yourself. Come yeah. On. Very good. Yep. I love that. Thanks, Sue. Yes. You're welcome. You. I'm sorry. It took me so long. I'm so no, sorry. you're fine. Um, so Stacy, do you want to, or does anybody have anything else on that? Cause I know the next section we're going to definitely go over <laughs> a lot. That's, that's, what's kind of like we're headed, we're headed to it and then we're going to stay there. Okay, so go ahead, Stacy. if you don't mind finishing off the chapter, that'd be awesome. <clears throat> okay, so I'm on 16. Okay, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immortality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, <clears throat> dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the spirit is, sorry, I have to, I have to tell you guys a story before I forget, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. We used to sing a song about the fruit of the spirit. And so help me, ever since I stopped teaching there, every time I go to try to say them, automatically my hands come up and I go to clap because you go, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, faithfulness, gentleness. Control. I cannot stop. So I'm sorry about that. My hands came off the Bible and I couldn't stop myself. It's so embarrassing. Although when you teach little kids, you learn songs like that. You know, yeah. You there are some that I still remember from teaching VBS and I'm like, yes. it's hard to not get, get into that. Yeah. But you never forget them that way either. You'll I know. Oh. Yeah. That's I was like when there's trivia and it's like, oh, for spirit, I know that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so there's so much in this. And I, again, this is this section, I feel like I'm just not going to be doing it justice because there was just so much to take in. And I was like, I, there's just so much. So this is really good to study on your own. We actually, me and my husband studied this and it's just eye opening. Um, so all that to say, I, I, there's just so much that you can take from this, but uh, verses 16 through 18, to walk in the spirit first means that the Holy Spirit lives in you. Second, it means to be open and sensitive to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Third, it means to pattern your life after the influence of the Holy Spirit. I love this quote. Um, life by the Spirit is neither legalism nor license, nor a middle way between them. It is a life of faith and love that is above all of these false ways. Um, and then Luther says, I, so, I, I love this, and I so desire to be like this. Um, when the flesh begins to cup up, uh, it's Martin Luther, if y'all don't, I'm um, sorry, I should be more specific. 
When the flesh begins to cut up, the only remedy is to take the sword of the spirit, the word of salvation, and fight against the flesh. If you set the word out of sight, you are helpless against the flesh. I know this to be a fact. I have been assailed by many violent passions, but as soon as I took hold of some scripture passage, my temptations left me. Without the word, I could not have helped myself against the flesh. Um, again, that's why I think that this Bible study to me is just so important. And I'm really sad when people like they start out really strong in January, but then they just kind of, you know, it's like life gets in the way and other things become more important. And it, it just saddens my heart because God's word is so important. That needs to be whatever you can take away to make sure you're in God's word. That should be the most important thing. Um, because God's word is what keeps us sane. God's word is what keeps us on track. And it is what we take to fight against all of these things. And it's okay if we have um, not condemnation, but conviction. If we have conviction, it's good. Um, and that's what this is saying. This is Paul is saying you as a believer should not have these things in your life. We mm -hmm. shouldn't. But sometimes we may give in to that, but we shouldn't, you know, we should feel that conviction when we do these things. Um, and conviction is good. We want conviction because that means the Holy Spirit is working in us. And so verses 19 through 21, the flesh is usually understood as the sinful nature of mankind that continues even after a person becomes a Christian. Some interpreters take it to mean mankind is are in its unsaved state with its sinful thoughts and behavioral patterns continually are continuing after conversion. When the desire of the flesh has the upper hand, the works of the flesh are obvious. Some are gross sins, but many are often viewed as acceptable behavior. Paul's point is that this type of behavior as a pattern of life is enough to cause a person not to inherit the kingdom of God. Thus a legalist can, cannot be justified by the works of the law. And a licensed person is excluded from the kingdom of God by the works of the flesh. So it's kind of like that balance. And this speaks of, of those who continue on in these sins, ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit telling them to stop. And um, I saw this from a commentary. The tense of the verb present indicates a habitual continuation in fleshly sins rather than an isolated lapse. And the point is that those who continually practice such sins give evidence of having never received God's spirit. The strength and the certainty of Paul in this verse is striking. Paul may sound rigid or even harsh here, but he is consistent with the biblical idea of conversion. When, when we come to Jesus to have our sins forgiven and our soul saved, he also changes our lives. It doesn't happen all at once, and the work will never be perfected on this side of eternity, but there will be a real change nonetheless. And we'll see that a lot in first John first John, we're going to talk about habitual sin. We're going to talk about, we're going to get way in depth on that in first John, um, as Charles Spurgeon is said to have put it, the grace that does not change my life will not save my soul. The idea isn't that a Christian could never commit these sins, but that they would never stay in these sins. Um, and first John three, if you're struggling with this first John three is a great chapter to go look at. Um, because it's a hard chapter though, because people don't want to believe it. I mean, that's, what's so hard. It's, it's hard because people don't want to believe like you, people who stay in habitual sin. It, it's like, why are you choosing this? And again, like I always say, and I can't remember who I was telling this to the other day, but, um, <coughs> why would you want to stay in why, when you're going to be in the presence of God one day, is that person or that sin more important than God? And when you're staying in habitual sin, that's what you're saying. You're saying, okay, God, this is more important than you because I want it over you. And that means it's an idol, right? And so that means we're, we're putting that in front of God and there shouldn't be anybody or anything that's more important than God. And so that's what he's talking about here. He's saying, do you want to stay in these, like these part, these parts in your life? Do you want to stay in them? Because if you do, you're choosing that over God and we can't have, there's no other gods before him. It's hard for people to grasp, but if you have, if you're really struggling with that, I would highly recommend looking up Frank Turek and listening to him because he's excellent about just apologetics and talking about these things. Um, and he wrote, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. 
And so um, if you want to read a good book about apologetics, he's great, but I like listening to him. Um, he's very brash in a sense. He's very blunt, um, but he's really good about explaining scripture. And I would highly recommend you listening to him if you have kids going off to college um, and just talking with your kids about um, things that he talks about and stuff. So at any rate, um, I didn't think I was going to go down that road. But again, this is this is what Paul is saying. He's constantly saying we have to have God as number one. Jesus is number one. He has to be number one. And, um, and we should, it, sin should break our hearts um, whenever we're in it. And if it's not, then again, you have to kind of get a heart check and say, why, why is this sin not breaking my heart? Why can I stay in the sin and it not affecting me? Um, and that is between you and the Lord and no one else. I mean, like that's, that's between you and him. Um, and then verses 22 through 23, the fruit illustration calls to mind the vine and the branches that produce fruit. And we see that we saw that in John 15, um, the mention of love first in this list looks back to Galatians five, um, six, and then 13 through 14. in the beginning of the chapter, such loving behavior comes through the power of the Holy spirit by faith, self-control holding in the passions and appetites is placed last in the list for emphasis because all the works of the flesh reflect lack of self-control. There is no need for prohibitive law when people's lives exhibit love and self-control, which, um, and so like, if you look at these, which of these do you, do you see yourself good at or which ones do you struggle with? Because I'll be honest, when we've been doing this fruits of the spirit at church, I get in the car and I'm like, I pretty much think at all of these, you know? <laughs> so, and so we, we were like, we were talking about it as a family after every one. And I'm like, kindness, I can be kind like at times. So we're good. And so we, we, uh, this is, it's been a really good thing for us, but then we go to verses 24 through 26 Christians belong to Christ Jesus and have been crucified with him along with their passions and desires. Such crucifixion is followed by resurrection living by the spirit. The logical way to live is to follow the spirit and not lapse back into the passions and desires of the flesh. Um, so I think for me, this is freeing. And so if we look at the end of this, I love how he ends this chapter because he's saying, now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. Since we live by the spirit, we must do the follow or also must also follow the spirit. We must not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So in other words, hey, I'm not going to envy somebody who is better at like gentleness than I am. I'm not going to envy that because God made me the way he did. But I should also desire that. I should also desire to have these fruits of the spirit. And so I'm not going to also settle and say, well, I don't have it. So it's all, you know, I don't want to do that either. I want to say, okay, Lord, I want to be able to have all of these fruits of the spirit. And so, um, again, like I think, uh, Stacy had mentioned earlier about beating yourself up because I really beat myself up so much for not, um, loving better or try to stop being who God created me to be, but he created me with such a deep sense of passion and justice, but I also need to take that and make sure it is done in love, not in the flesh. And I think that that's where Paul is saying, like, he's saying, we have to take these fruits of the spirit, but we have to do them all in love. So we have to show love with joy. We have to show love with peace. We have to show love with patience. We have to show love with kindness and goodness and faith and gentleness and self-control. All these things are the root of them are all love. And then with that love are the fruits of the spirit, which is why the fruits of the spirit. Um, and then love translates the ancient Greek word agape. Um, in the language, there were four distinct words for love, and some of y'all may know these, but these are really cool. And because I think I told y'all last week, I was I just got done reading um, the book Becoming Mrs. Lewis, and so this was also good too. I like you know going over this, but um, E R O S was the word for romantic or passionate love. Philia which is P-H-I-L-I-A, was the word for the love we have for those near and dear to us, um, be they family or friends. S-T-O-R-G-E, which I would think was storge, is the word for the love that shows itself in affection and care, especially family affection. But agape describes a kind of love, a kind of love. It, it is a love more decision than the spontaneous heart, as much as a matter of the mind than the heart, because it chooses to love the undeserving. 
Agape has to do with the mind. It is, sim it is not simply an emotion which rises unbidden in our hearts. It is a principle by which we deliberately live. So a lot of the times we have agape love for other people. We have agape love for a situation. We have agape love. Um, and I love that at the end of the day, we have verse 25 and we have the spirit to guide us and direct us. Let us live by the spirit. And I say, I have been preparing this lesson for my heart that has gripped and prodded and dissected. Um, I have like, I have learned so much by doing the fruit of the spirit in the past couple of weeks with the church, um, with our church. But I also have really just for God to dissect my heart. I have really, really loved doing the fruits of the spirit um, because it really has shown me like we as Christians need to have these fruits of the spirit and the world can try to take them away and, and Satan can come in and he can try to devour you by taking these away. But we have got to stand firm. We have got to pray. We have got to stand firm in God's word and allow our minds to be reminded daily of these um, and just daily to love one another. And that's what's going to change everything. So I'll go ahead and end, end this at the end of uh, our discussion with what I have at the very end. I have a long paragraph to read. So I'll, I'll read it after y'all have. Um, I know there's a lot that we just covered. So go ahead and what do, what do you got on that? I had, I had mentioned a lot. And then also with the question, which of these do you see yourself good at and which ones do you see yourself struggle with? Shannon, I just wanted to say that there's no way we can have any of these without the proper time spent with him. And I think that's yeah. what you covered above these. And that sometime back, that was very much a struggle for me. I met well, I met, I met that when I got up that I would, you know, that I would have my time with the Lord and I would have my prayer time and then I would have my study time. And it just seemed like something always got in the way. And especially when I thought I could get an extra 30 minutes of sleep or an extra hour of sleep because I went to bed late. And so I was convicted one week after a sermon that um, I would not eat until I had my study, my spiritual food until I would not have my physical food until I had my spiritual food each and every day. Mm -hmm. And you can make sure I get it in now because I'm not going to go until the next morning or whatever without eating. And so it, it's just because, and it may not be for everybody, but that's what I was convicted of that would work for me. And it has worked for me. And sometimes it may be 11 or 12 o'clock before I get to have my study time. So it's after that, that I get to eat for the day, but it has worked for me. And it's, it's a way to make sure I get my study time in that it, it that is it is important and there may be demands on my day there may be somebody that's texting me or some calls I have to make for church or family or whatever but it, it still gets done that way and that's that's just what I've had to do because I don't have enough discipline to do it on my own <laughs> that's really cool Sue wow that is that's good mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, embarrassing that I can't just do it on my own, but that's, oh. you know, no, that's I wouldn't be what embarrassed took, at all. No, it, that's what it took for me. So. Well, it took my sons going into the military for me to become <laughs> convicted and to every morning pray and ask for help. Definitely. Mm. Definitely puts us when we have a place of need like that veil, doesn't it? It's like it's out of our control. You just have to give it to God. Well, I don't want fear to rule my life. I want faith. So I asked mm. them to give me the faith to know that they would be, you know, taken care of and that they would do the right thing. Yeah. Faith over fear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so touching. I almost put that shirt on today, but instead I put he greater than me. <laughs> You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. Matthew 5, 3. Mm. That's my middle of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse. Mm. So That's good. It's, it's true. You can't rely on him unless you're kind of trying to dig yourself out of the ditch. So yeah, you, know, well, you, can't I mean, up, you can't show up with the shovel unless you're down there needing help. So. And in our weakness, he's made strong. I mean, that's a promise he gives us. So, yeah. mm. you know, he doesn't say when you're strong, I'll be strong and come right along beside you. He said, when you're weak, <laughs> praise the Lord for that. Because mm -hmm. yeah, where would we be without that? Yeah. 
it's like Paul says, he, he even is thankful for that weakness because then he can rely on the Lord more. And it's kind of like that. It's kind of sad because sometimes we're, it's like, do we go through a trial so we can come closer to God? You know, it's like, you know, that, and I think that's what Paul struggled with, you know, and especially like, you know, of course being here versus being in heaven, you know, really want to be in heaven with Jesus, but I really want to, I, but I need to stay here and tell people about him and everything. It's that spirit versus the flesh for sure. Very good. Yeah, I thought we were gonna have a whole lot more discussion on this than we are. I know. I kind of feel like I shut it down, and I hope I didn't do that. I didn't. No, no. you didn't. You didn't at all. No. I'm so glad that I found y'all in January because I have been so faithful. Thank you. Thanks to y'all and to God because otherwise I probably would have stopped by now. You know, there are some, I've only missed like three or four times, I think in the past year, past six, how many ever months we're in now, but I've never, you know, for some reason or other, I thought it was other Bible studies or other group studies have been boring. And, you know, I just didn't, didn't feel full, you know, to keep on going, you know, or want to keep on going. But I'm so glad that that I have because this has really helped me through this this year oh well we're glad you're here Juanita it's yeah. a great group it really is and it has brought me but my faith much closer so yeah. thank you for all yeah. of you that have been here don't you find second, you Juanita better? I I also I you know this is the first time that I can remember in a long time that I've read through the New Testament yes, and I'm still yes. doing my journal and everything. And I was like, wow, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm really <laughs> proud of myself. I mean, we're like, we're almost halfway through now. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and doing it. So yeah, yeah, this group has been really motivating for me. Uh, yeah. You're actually three fourths of the way, Angie. Three fourths. Woo! <laughs> you're doing awesome. And Shannon, I just want you to thank Laurie for the journals. The journals have oh, made yes. such a difference in my study. I've, it, oh, I have gone from reading, just reading, then I couldn't even tell you what I'd read, but I read my devotion. So, you know, I could check that blank off or whatever um, to really picking out things that, you know, you can talk about and you can discuss Important. and you can share with others. And it has made all the difference in the world in how I read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, it really has. I, I decided sometime, I want to say end of or middle of Mark, that I wanted more than just reading one chapter, you know, a day. And so I, you, you know, you got on YouTube and looked for a, a preacher or a sermon. And I started liking one that I found that they've actually recorded uh, like a, a Sunday, you know, church service on every single chapter in the Bible. Oh, and so wow. I listened to that. And some of the, some of the, the sermons on, you know, a you know, like say chapter five of some uh, Bible, it says it, it takes them five weeks to get it in. So these sermons are, um, you know, long and, you know, the, and they're about 30 to 45 minutes each. And so if one chapter has five of them, some, they're usually like two, sometimes uh, one, but, you know, most of them I say are two. So I started listening to YouTube on a very fast speed. Yes, and I just found that out. Isn't that exciting, Carmen? And you can get, you know, so on the days that there's five, you know, because I wanted more. I wanted to understand more and, and look for mm -hmm. something else. It's just so, it's been a blessing, you know. So I really try to, to, you know, each chapter that we read, I really try to back it with that you know as as you know help for me to understand what i'm doing and it's been a blessing to me it really has what what preacher um i just youtube calvary chapel ontario check him oh. and so the and it'll pop up the the preacher is a um is paul oh paul and Oh, that's his name. I can't remember. I can never remember his last name. I think it's with a B. And um, 
it's if you just go to Calvary Chapel, Ontario as a name for YouTube mm -hmm. and then go to their playlist and it has them all listed. Oh, wow. I normally just Google like, you know, Galatians 5 and mm -hmm. then it, and, and I find it that way, but it's under yeah. Calvary Chapel, Ontario. Cool. Thank you. Um, the new journals, I should know when they're coming out, but I have no idea, but it's Old Testament and it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of reading next year, y'all. I'm just going to warn y'all in advance. It's going to be a lot because we're going to do the Old Testament all in a year. And so, wow. Um, I actually have them. It's not a, oh, it's oh. not a, a chapter a day. No, no. Oh, Lordy, no. Lordy. Y'all, I'm not <laughs> going to tell you start. all of the battles I tried to fight on that one, but I lost um, more so because of, well, it was all logistics, I guess. It was all too many journals and it'd be way more expensive. Lori has to pay a lot of money for these to get done and she loses mm -hmm. money on some of them because, and so it's like, I had tried to tell her people will pay more, but you know how Lori is. And yeah. so it's like, um, so at any rate, we, we had a long discussion uh, back and forth, um, for a lot, like I pleaded with many people, but I lost. So I will we'll read it to you. If you can, you know, if you, you know, sometimes you're too tired, yeah. I, I do gateway app, but it's also biblegateway.com. They uh -huh. have a whole slew of, um, commentary interpretation. So yeah, commentary, yeah. version you yeah. like. And it even has one where it'll read to you in a dramatization. So you hear like the, the, the horses and whatnot. So if you want that, it, it's helpful. Sometimes. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. No. The, the pros and cons to it, I think is, is on some of them we'll go through really fast. So yeah. like, we're going to go through Job like in a week. And so wow. I mean, I, but I love Job, but I love the end of Job. So I'm like, yeah, I can do that. And then Ecclesiastes, or not Ecclesiastes, um, well, numbers and Deuteronomy numbers more. So we're going to go do that really quick. So, I mean, there's going to be pros mm -hmm. and cons to it, but the prophets is just going to be hard because there's so much goodness and profit. So we'll see how it works. God is in control. And that's what I had to say at the end of the day. And so I just, I, I don't want, I mean, doing one chapter a day has been awesome in the new Testament, but there are pros and cons to it. So it'll be, yeah. it'll be good either way. It's God's word and we're going to go through it and um, you know, it's going to be good. So that's so I keep on saying either way, you know, hopefully, Is but it, hopefully we will not grow weary and, and just <laughs> stick the course and we'll hold each other true. accountable too. Like, I think that's why I like this group so much and kind of Juanita, what you were saying is it, it's just such a good group because y'all hold us all account. We all hold each other accountable mm -hmm. and, yeah. and everything. So, you know, and that's what hopefully we can do, especially, but this has just been really good. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I love whenever y'all give your like opinion and stuff, because I love it. It's just been good. Um, just to hear y'all's thing. And, and that's the one thing I say things, but I, what I say, does not mean it's gold. Um, it's my opinion. A lot of things are my opinion. And, and I, I want people to say that or know that because um, I, I am wrong a lot of times, so I'll own it um, and stuff. But there are some things that I can stand on because it's God's word. And I know that you can't take it out of context and everything, but um, I just want to throw that out there too. But let me, let me leave with this paragraph and we'll see if there's anything that y'all have to say after, after this, the fruits of the spirit or of the renewed nature, which we are to do are names. And as the apostle had chiefly named works of the flesh, not only hurtful to men themselves, but tending to make them so to one another. So here we chiefly notices the fruits of the spirit, which tend to make Christians agreeable to one another, as well as to make them happy. The fruits of the spirit plainly show that such are led by the spirit um, by describing the works of the flesh and fruits of the spirit we are told to avoid and oppose and what we are to cherish and cultivate and this is the sincere care and endeavor of all real christians sin does not now reign in their mortal bodies so that they obey it from romans six twelve, for they seek to destroy it christ never will own those who yield themselves up to be the servants of sin and it is not enough that we cease to do evil but we must learn to do well our conversations will always be answerable to the principle which guides and governs us in Romans 8, 5, 
We must set ourselves in earnest to mortify the deeds of the body and to walk in the newness of life, not being desirous of vain glory or unduly wishing for the esteem and applause of men, not provoking or envying one another, but seeking to bring forth more abundantly the, those good fruits, which are through Jesus Christ to, to the praise and glory of God. I felt like that just kind of summed up Galatians, um, especially this chapter, um, because it just, it kind of, and again, I, Galatians reminded me a lot of Romans. And so it definitely, so to, we started Ephesians. So we'll, so that summed up Galatians. And then next week, Ephesians, we're going to go over um, the full armor of God. So Ooh. I feel like that's going to go really good with, with this chapter as well, the fruits of the spirit, the form of God, they kind of go hand in hand a lot. So we're going to see that too. Um, so does anybody have anything before we end today? It's been so good. I just want to encourage people not to be overwhelmed by the whole new Testament thing. They don't have to read the whole Testament. They can read the ones that you're going to go over or whatever. Mm -hmm. if the whole Testament, the old Testament's too much. So don't, don't not get the journals and join us just because you think it's going to be too much reading or whatever yeah. while you're, while you're cooking or while you're chopping, while you're doing whatever, you can listen to some, you know, read to you online or whatever, but don't, don't let that hinder you from joining us. Yeah. But it's so good. Y'all It's so good. And we're going to see so much of Jesus. <laughs> there is Jesus. All that's why I'm so excited about it because we're going to see Jesus in such a new way. And that's what, that's what excites me about it. Um, once I realize that Jesus is all throughout the old Testament and woven in, I, it amazes me and it, it does. And that's why it's like, oh, this is so cool how God did this, you know, mm -hmm. and so much that was done and so much, um, just symbolism for Jesus. It's just so cool. So I don't know. I, I, I get excited about it. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm excited to see what God does and everything too. So it'll be good. I was going to ask if it's um, five days a week, like this journal, or if it's going to be seven since it's more and it would break it up more. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's five days. So you'll have the weekends to catch up is what we were thinking. So, you know, that's what I think. And again, that's what can you take out of your weekends to be able to catch up? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing you have your mornings, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday mornings, especially, you know, even if you have to take an hour on Saturday morning, like Sue said, you know, before you eat Saturday, you know, you try to catch up and everything. So, um, Carmen, if you can share that link and whenever I do the replay, can you share that link to that? Um, whenever yeah. I, whenever I put the replay up on, on the Facebook page. Okay. Thank um, you. yes, I will. I've got to go. Thank you. Okay. Bye Carmen. Okay. Bye, we'll go Carmen. ahead and head out to, can somebody pray us out and also make sure to pray for Davis whenever you pray? Well, I'll close us out. This is something oh, that I wrote to both of my boys that I was led to write because it was the feelings that I had. And Davis has pinned it to his prayer board and reads it weekly. He said to all his men that are around him, oh. <clears throat> I will read what I wrote to them, and it's somewhat like a prayer. For each and every one of us during this time of difficulty and with many changes and some that are also impossible challenges, I ask you, Lord, to please carry us when we are too weak to walk and hold us up when we feel like collapsing. Please wrap, the, wrap us in your loving arms and give us peace and comfort in these extraordinary times to know that we will find our faith and believe that our course will be steadfast and that we will not lose our way. Please bless us all with your grace today and every day. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bill. That was awesome. Bill, and we are praying for you too. I mean, yeah. it is hard. It's hard when, you're, when your kids are, are over there. So you just keep that faith and, and we are praying for you too. Lean on us. Thank you. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. In this together. Yeah. Thank y'all so much. I hope y'all have a great week and thank y'all again thank for coming you. and showing up and just your encouragement best, to each other for sure. Best part of my week every week. No doubt. Bye, y'all. Have a great week. We'll definitely be praying. And Val, keep us posted as well. 
Oh, believe me, I will. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.